Turn with, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalms. And I want you to turn to the one, one, 105 division of Psalms. Psalms 105. And I want you to, uh, we're going to look at, we're going to start at verse number 17. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord God, for the privilege and honor, Lord God, to share with your people. We thank you, Lord. We ask you that you would allow me to speak as your oracle today, that these will not be my words, but they will be your words. And Lord, they will minister life to those that hear them and receive them. Father, I bind every work of the enemy. I bind Satan. I bind every demon of blindness, demons that would try to bring a deaf ear to the people as they hear the word of God. I shut the mouths of the accuser of the brothering, and I command the devil to be bound in chains that cannot be broken. And Lord, and let your angels surround, secure this place. And we'll give you glory for the manifestations in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Last week we started talking, we talked about the appointed time, the set time. I want to uh, just kind of augment that message. Uh, and I'm going to use this out of Psalms 105. And let's look at verse 17. And it says in the, in the King James Version, it says, He sent a man before them even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all of his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure, and to teach his senators wisdom. I'm going to read it in, a, in, in several different translations to, to uh, be able to get the context that in the Amplified translation, it says, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a servant, his feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in chains of iron, and his soul entered into the iron until his word to his cruel brothers came true, until the word of the Lord tried and tested him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people let him free. He made Joseph lord of his house and ruler of his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure to teach his elders wisdom. In the NIV translation, it says, and he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons till what he foretold came to pass, till the word of the Lord proved him true. In the New Living Translation, it says, Then he sent someone to Egypt ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with fetters, placed his neck in an iron collar until the time came to fulfill his dreams. The Lord tested Joseph's character. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Most of us know the story of Joseph. But in context to what we started talking about, the Lord began to just augment this and, and add on. But we talked about the, the promise, the journey, and the breakthrough. We talked about last week and about the set time. And the Lord began to deal with me concerning Joseph. And we talked about the fact that we talked about the journey part being the, the, the long, drawn-out part of, of our uh, 
of getting to the place where God has appointed the place of our miracle, our breakthrough, our, our coming to pass of the word of God in our lives. This is a perfect example. Verse 17 first says, he sent a man before. We talk about being apostolic. The ap uh, apostles are sent ones. And so, so when we understand that, that God has sent us, God has purposed us, God has ordered our footsteps, God has ordered our pathway, that we have been sent by God, that there's a reason that we're here in the earth. We're not here by chance. And when we became uh, uh, believers in Christ and were born again, then there was even a greater purpose for our lives that were set before us. Many of us, praise God, when we were, when, when we were born again, that, that uh, God began to deal with us and promise us and begin to tell us things, praise God, concerning our lives. And so he was sent by God so everything in his life, everything in his life because he was sent by God was orchestrated by God was orchestrated by God. Sometimes we, we, we think that if God has sent us or if God has told us to do something, that it will be very, very easy for it to be done. Sometimes we think if God has really promised us something and if God has prophesied something to us, that it will come to pass very easily. But many of us don't know that they are warfare over war, a word from the Lord. Paul told Timothy, he said, war with the prophetic word. In other words, you going to have to fight for this. This is not going to be like ripe cherries falling off of a tree on your head. There is a battle for the word. There's a battle over the word. And so the, the journey, the, the process that God takes us through after we have received the word of the Lord, and this is so very important, this message is so very important to a prophetic church, to a prophetic people, to a people of destiny, that we must understand, praise God, that there is a battle over every word that God speaks over your life. The devil heard the word when you heard the word, and he is going to battle you and fight that word. But what we can be confident in is that God is orchestrating and praise God and, the, and all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Everything that comes against us, praise God, will push us into our destiny. I know that, that praise God, that we, we don't like the devil, but uh, the devil, praise God, doesn't understand sometimes he is helping us when he thinks he's hindering us. When he is pushing us, he thinks he's pushing us, praise God, uh, uh, into misery, praise God, and what he's doing is pushing us into the mission that God has for us to accomplish. God uses him as a tool. In other words, since you here, since you didn't messed up this stuff, and now I'm redeeming it, praise God, and praise God, and there is there is there is uh, uh, tears in your in your uh, in, in in your garden, praise God, and praise God. There's there's dandelions in your field of dreams, and but but God allows that. And we must understand this prophetic people that, that, that the word of the Lord, what God told you, what God spoke to you, what God promised you, praise God. And as soon as you got the word, it looked like all hell broke loose. I, I know y'all don't, maybe I'll find somebody in here. How many have gotten a word that you knew was God? That you knew God had spoken? And then all hell broke loose. It is because, praise God, God is orchestrating the thing. In other words, praise God, he's causing your hits. 
He's causing your pain, praise God. To, 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 he's using it, praise God, to test, to try, to develop you, to get you ready, praise God, so you will be ready when your set time comes. Be not weary in well-doing, saints, for in due season, look at somebody and say, due season, you will reap if you faint not. If it was so easy, there would be no, 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 no potential for fainting or failure. The devil tries you in every kind of way. The devil will come at you with so many different things. And we must understand one of the one of the greatest attributes of the prophetic, I mean, excuse me, of the apostolic, of an apostle. One of the greatest things is Paul said, one of the signs of an apostle is perseverance, stick to itiveness, stay with it, fight it through, ain't gonna give up. Ain't gonna turn back. And I've said this many times every prophet needs an apostle in their life. Because when because prophets, because they experience and they they sit in the council of God, they and, and they and they they are sensitive, very sensitive spiritually. They are also sensitive emotionally because they can pick up the emotions in the spirit and praise God. And sometimes they can be very emotional. Well, I, I'm not putting down prophets. I love prophets. I, I don't want to be in a nonprofit organization. But but when 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 Jezebel pointed her little finger at Elijah and said uh, uh, after Elijah had dealt with the 450 prophets of, of Baal, praise God, and he had conquered them, praise God, put them to death, and then uh, Jezebel put her little crooked finger and said, by this time tomorrow, I'm gonna have your head off your shoulders. And Elijah, the great prophet, took off running. It's nothing worse than a prophet running. Oh Lord, huh? let me get to, I ain't got to my message yet. It's nothing worse than a prophet running. Because they can be emotional and there he is in the cave by himself. I'm the only one that's hearing from God. I'm the only one that knows what God is trying to do. God had to shake him up. Man, do you think you the only one in the world that's got a word from me? I have 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. I got 7,000 that have not kowtowed to the devil. But when they threw the apostles in jail, Paul and Silas, they're in jail in stocks. They just been whipped. They wasn't in there talking about, oh, woe is me. The apostolic anointing is an anointing of perseverance. It's anointing, praise God, that stands. It's a stable anointing. If you get around an apostle, you have stability. God made them that way. And they're in the Philippi, Philippi jail, having been beat, having been, been, been uh, put in stocks. And the Bible says at midnight. I, you know, that, that's significant because, you know, we always talk about our midnights. Like that's the worst time. At the midnight, at their worst time, being beat, bleeding, praise God. They prayed and sang praises unto God. An apostle would be in jail singing. Praise him. Worship him. Now don't get me wrong. Praise God. There are, prop, there are prophets. Praise God. I believe that as prophets mature, as they get more mature, praise God, they, they become more stable because they understand, praise God, that they're not the only one. Hallelujah. 
And I don't know why, why God took me down there. But let me explain something. <laughs> let me get to my message. Joseph is sent. He's apostolic. He's sent. He has a sent anointing. He is sent, praise God, before them. And the Bible says, who was sold as a servant. In the, in the, in the NIV, it says, sold as a slave. In other words, praise God, uh, uh, apostles do not, uh, praise God, have uh, the easy road. They have a tough road. Because God develops them, praise God, in the furnace, praise God, of adversity. And he was sent before them, even Joseph, who was sold as a slave, whose feet they hurt in fetters. And he was laid in iron until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord was tried. Now that is so very significant that you understand that he had a word from the Lord. He had a dream that came from the Lord. God had told him that he would rule and reign over his brothers, his father, his mother, praise God, that he would be, praise God, a ruler. But let me tell you some the process, the process, because this talks about him going into Egypt but what we have done, but we, we know the story, praise God, that Joseph was rejected by his brother. In other words, Joseph was tried. The word was tried. God will allow the devil to try to, 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 to put pressure on the word. He'll cause the circumstances to go just the opposite of what the word said it would go. He'll cause, praise God, because what is he doing? He is not only trying the word, he is trying you. He is trying me. I've been tried many times. God says something, praise God, and everything else is going the opposite direction. God says it's going to be sunshine outside and the devil sends rain. And you say, wait a minute, God, you said, you said, and one of the things that I've learned over the years in walking with God is that when God tells you something so specifically, you know, when you know you think you know that you know that you know that you heard from God, there's rough sailing ahead. You about to go through hell. See, you have to tell people the truth. Because I know the, the, that, that, you know, you, you want to name it and claim it. You want to blab it and grab it. You want to, you know, uh, believe it and receive it. And that's all good. But, but praise God. But this kind of of, 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 of walking with God, this kind of manifestation that God did in Joseph's life. Joseph, praise God, became a ruler in Egypt. When God is about to really elevate you, he really takes you down low before he takes you up high. You must descend before you can ascend, praise God. Somebody say this with me, the pit, the prison, and the palace. In other words, God's got many times got to send you to the pit. Send you so. In other words, his brothers rejected him. God's when he says that, jo, that Joseph was tested, these are the tests that you will go through. You will go through the test of rejection. Where you're rejected by your own kinfolk, family members. That's one of the tests you got to go through. Oh, I want to be apostolic, okay. You got to go through the pit of rejection. I believe that God does that because he understands, praise God, that our rejection will be our undoing. And he wants us to get delivered from our rejection. Because if rejection is in you, you will be a rejected prophet. You'll be a rejected apostle. You'll be a rejected mama. You'll be a rejected daddy until rejection gets out of your life. Because rejection, praise God, is a spirit that the enemy sends to open the door to other demons in your life. So he deals with first he tries you with rejection 
Can you still walk with God when everybody has turned against you? Oh, Lord. Used to be a time when folk got saved and really got saved and turned to God and stopped doing the things that they stopped doing. Many times some were kicked out of their homes because their family didn't want them to be saved, didn't want them to know Jesus. They had to be all in. They had to make up their mind that they were going to serve God regardless. And the old saints many times, praise God, would have folks that would be put up in their house because they'd be kicked out because they had received Jesus and they had accepted Jesus. Jesus, what have you given up? What have you lost as a result of walking with God? Does everybody still like you? You ain't went through the rejection process. You have never been put in the pit. I don't know about you, but I've been in the pit. Folks don't like you. Folks think you're crazy. Folks think, praise God, that what, what God is saying to you is ridiculous. The pit. They threw him in a pit. They rejected him. He did not fit in. Can you deal with not being able to fit in with everybody else? Fit in with the crowd, praise God. I remember we were doing the personality when, when the Hendersons were here. They were doing the different personalities. They were doing them uh, based on, praise God, in Ezekiel when it talks about the, 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 the faces, the different faces of, the, of those, of those uh, creatures that were with God. The face of a man, the face of a, of a lion, the face of an ox, uh, and, and, and praise God, and the face of an eagle. And I remember I came out, I thought I was an ox. And the Lord began to deal with me, and he said, you have misidentified yourself. You are not an ox. He said, you are an eagle. He said, you are an eagle. He said, didn't I say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of an eagle. In other words, when you're waiting on God, you're waiting in the pit, you're waiting in the prison, you're waiting all by yourself, praise God. God says, you walk alone. You don't, you, you don't have to have everybody on your side. I made you that way. So you wouldn't need a pat on the back from the devil in order, praise God, to feel good about yourself. See, because if your person, your, that, that personality, you know, somebody talked about the man personality. I'm, I'm not going to get into all that. The man personality, he got to have the stage. He got to have every, she got to be every, she got to be it. And the way that God deals with your, the, your personality quirks, because there's some personality quirks, quirks in the ego too, so don't get me wrong. But what he deals with is he gets, he gets you rejected in order to deal with the quirks in your personality. Well, I know I'm talking to somebody today. And he will deal with you. In the pit, praise God. That's where, praise God, you by yourself, rejected, alone, in the dark. Nobody like you. <laughs> you know, we all want to be likable. We always want somebody to like us. I want to be liked. I think that's why God gave me Sister Hogan, because she likes me. <laughs> Say, I'm going to give you somebody to like you because you are an unlikable person, but I'm going to give you somebody that's going to like you for who you are. <laughs> the pit. Rejection. That's the rejection test. Say, again, on his, whose feet was hurt in fetters, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. In verse 19 in the Amplified says, until his word to his cruel brothers came true, until the word of the Lord tried and tested him. And, and then in the, in the New Living Translation, it said it tested his character. Oh, Lord, when you, 
We don't hear many, many sermons about character anymore. That's why we got so many characters in the church. Not much character, but we got a lot of characters. Playing different roles. Let's get some genuine folk. Some in, people of integrity. Preachers that are not playing games with people. Manipulating the saints. Mm. In other words, God tests your character, give you, put you under rejection, put you under the pressure of rejection. I want to be like everybody else. You know how it was when we came up in school. When we, you're a young person growing up. You want everybody to like you. You want to fit in with everybody. You want to be part of the, the group, part of the homies. You want everybody to like you. You want to be a part. You want them to be saying, hey, hook it whoa. But God, when he's processing you, he's got to take you to the place of rejection. Because if you don't learn how to deal with the rejection, if you don't learn how to overcome the place of the pit and rejection in your life, praise God, you will never be able to function in the palace. If, if Joseph had not been able to deal with his rejection in the pit, when his brothers came down to Egypt, <laughs> I know what y'all did to me. God got to get that old revenge devil out of you. That old devil, praise God, that want to come back at folk when they didn't done you wrong. But Jesus said, pray for those that despitefully use you. He said, <laughs> hallelujah, love those that hate you. God know if I put you over something and praise God, put you over finances, put you over uh, the blessings of God and praise God and you ain't got your rejection through, you're going to use it, praise God, to get all of your so-called enemies. In other words, you're going to be putting financial hits out. You're going to be putting hits out on folk that didn't do you right while you were in the pen. So God has to deal with our rejection. That's the trying of our dealing with our rejection, getting those things out of us. The interesting thing about Joseph is, is that when they took him out of the pit, they sold him into slavery. You know, that, to me, that's like the test of estrangement because now not only did they reject you in the house, but now they didn't put you out. In other words, they didn't got rid of you. They didn't, you are estranged from everything that you know, everything that, that you were comfortable with. God has to take you sometimes out of a place of comfort and put you in a place, praise God, where it's uncomfortable, where he can, he can train you, he can develop you, he can teach you, praise God. And we have to be able to understand that God is orchestrating our Foots are ordered by him, step by step. The, one time the Lord told me, he said, your steps are ordered by me. He said, so as you go through life, he said, everybody you meet, everybody you, you, you come in contact with, don't look down on them. That may be the very person, praise God, that I have put in your life, praise God, to bring you to the place, praise God, where I am taking you. And some folks love to step over some folks. Those are the little folks. We just step over them. We step all over the little folk. We want to hang around with the big folk, with the famous folk. God has to get that out of you. If he, can, if he doesn't get it out of you, when he gets you to the place where he elevates you, praise God, it's going to all be about you. Hmm. So he estranges you, takes you out of your comfort zone, puts you in a place, praise God. He's went at Potiphar's house. He is serving Potiphar as a slave in a strange place. But one of the things the Lord told me, and he, and he wanted me to share with you, is every place that Joseph went, he, this, is, this is the way he gave it to me. He said, what do you do while you're waiting for God to elevate you and put you where he said he's going to put you. And he, and he gave me this. He said, if you notice, son, every 
every place that Joseph went, he made it better than what it was before he got there. Are you in, you may be in your servant place. Are you doing, are you making the place where you are now better? Because if you don't make the place where you are better, when you get to the place, praise God, where God wants you, praise God, you're going to make things worse. See, I'm preaching prophetically. I've been preaching prophetically for, for several Sundays. I don't have these down in notes. They're coming directly from the Spirit of God. And, and if you'll catch it, praise God, God's going to help you because there's a new season that God is releasing in your life. Then the pit, the pit, the prison, the prison, the prison, the prison. That's where, where, where you, you're put in stocks, falsely accused. Can you deal with falsely being accused? See, some, you know, it's one thing, praise God, when you know you did it and you're being punished. But what do you do when you know you didn't do nothing? When you know you, wasn't, you, you did not commit the crime, but you're still doing the time. What do you do when you're falsely accused? See, some of us, we will, we will, we would defend, we would defend ourselves. We'll, we'll, we'll be, we'll, we'll grumble and complain. All Joseph did, he went to Potiphar's house, and the Bible says that God, Potiphar's house was blessed because of Joseph, Joseph's favor that God had on his life, and Joseph made the place better, and he caused everything that was in Potiphar's house to prosper. Then, praise God, then his wife falsely accuses him, and he gets thrown into prison. And in prison, praise God, in stocks, praise God, for something he did not do. Now, you think rejection is one thing when they reject you, your family, but when you get, when you are blamed for things that you did not do, I could help a lot of, night, uh, a lot of pastors to let them know, you're going to be accused of things that, that you didn't, that <laughs> folk will accuse you of all kinds of things, and you know you haven't done it. And if you don't, and, and if you if you're not careful, you'll use that to come after the saints. God's got to get all that out of your life. He's in the prison. He's in stocks. He makes the prison better. <laughs> you know, you know, someone. Well, you know, I can't function in this place because, see, the Lord, I, the Lord has, God has spoken to me. I can't work as a servant. I can't be a deacon because, see, God has called me. I don't, you don't know. See, I have already had the dream. I am supposed to be over the apostle. I'm supposed to be over everybody. God showed me. What do you do before God takes you to the place do you make anything better where you are now? Or does everything get worse when you get into it? I, minister, I remember ministering at, uh, at a funeral in Chicago. And one of the messages the Lord gave me was value added. He said some things do not add any value to you at all. They always just take I want to be that I came into your life as your pastor and you became better because of the word of God, because of my life, because of my example, that you were better off if you have to leave living bread. When you leave, you say, well, I left better than when I came. That 
what is the, that's what you do before you come to the place. You make everything, every place that you go, you make it better than what it was before. And God said, look at him. Everywhere he go, he make that better. He done made the praise team better. He done made the ushers better. He done made this better. He done made the prayer better. He done made the intercessors better. He done made, praise God, the, 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 the security better. He done made, praise God, everything, I, everywhere I put him. Everywhere I put her. It's better. Got to promote this person. I got to raise this one up. Because when they get there, they're going to make it better. He's in the prison and the prison get better. He didn't open up a prophetic church in the prison. This is what the Spirit of God is telling me to ask you. Can you prophesy in the prison? Do you need a stage for your prophecy? Do you need a platform to say what God tells you to say? Can you prophesy in the prison? That means when you're going through, that's why the apostles have to persevere because many times we are going through while we helping you through. Pastors are going through while they getting you through. I can't get up in the morning, praise God, with a bad day, praise God, and, and praise God and cuss the members out. I got to encourage, I got to... I got to uh, 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 exhort. I got to lift you up. Praise God. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Because if you can prophesy in the prison, you can prophesy anywhere. Look at your neighbor and say, if you can prophesy in the prison, you can prophesy anywhere. Uh, I remember we, we had some prophets come and they were talking about, I prophesied to kings, the Lord. I prophesied in the nations. That's all good. Thank God for your auspicious, <laughs> glorious words over the hierarchies and the, the, the kings. But I got a question for you. Have you ever prophesied in the prison? Have, have, you, had to, ha, have you ever had to prophesy your way out of prison? <laughs> oh, Lord. Ah, somebody going to get this. You may be in a prison now, but you can prophesy your way out of the prison. Don't let situations and circumstances take you out. I, I don't care what it is. I, you look, you devil, you, you ain't got enough to stop me from doing the will of God. You ain't got enough to stop me from coming and preaching the gospel. You ain't got enough, praise God, to stop me from being a husband, praise God, and a, and a man of God. You ain't got enough to stop me. I know I might be in the prison now, but I'm prophesying, praise God. I'm helping folk in the prison because I know I'm going to go to the next level, and that's going to be the palace. <laughs> Prophesy in your prison. Paul and Silas praised and sang praises. I don't know what prophetic songs they released. But the prison was shaken. The prison was shaken. God will shake your prison if you learn how to prophesy right there. Kobasha. The pit, the prison, the prison, the prison. He's down in the prison. See, sometimes it looks like when God is orchestrating and moving your life, it looks like you're getting worse and worse when really you're getting better and better. Joseph was a better person 
in the prison than he was in Potiphar's house. God make you better through your adversity. We say this many times, Sister Hogan and myself, we say we didn't been through everything together. I think about somebody, well, you know, you know, I, I, <laughs> I know this, this is kind of off, but you know, you get these men that, you know, when they, they marry a, a woman, you know, they both, they poets, Job, Turkey, they go through so much together, then he hits it. He gets a great job or whatever, and he gets to make it, and then he puts her down and go and get a, you know, he's, he's 65, he go and get a 13-year-old, I mean, uh, not a 13-year-old, but I mean, he go get some young, some young filly. He goes get some young, some young something. But see, there's nobody that can replace Joyce Hogan. Because she has been through all of the hell that God had to take me through. She was right by my side going through the same hell. When I was in the pit, she was in the pit with me. In the prison, she was in the prison with me. Ain't got time for no foolishness. <laughs> Let me close, because I'm getting this funny spell. You know, sometimes you get a funny spell. <laughs> I remember hearing, uh, I love uh, uh, this comedian, Sinbad. I love Sinbad. Because I, li I, I like him a lot because I don't have to deal with all the vulgarity. It's pretty clean, his, but, but he was talking about in his comeback, he was saying that, he said, he said, he said he, you know, him and his first wife, he had broke, they had broke up, and then now they had gotten, they gotten back together and married, got married again. And he said, you know, I, he said, I, I got back together with, with my wife. He said, he said, uh, he said, you have, men, we got to learn something. That young girl that you think love you, she wants your house, she wants your car, and she wants your money. And then he goes on to say this. He said, you need somebody. He said, me and my wife got back together. He said, perfect. He said, because, he said she understands me. He said, and she knows. She said, you need a, that woman that's older that's been with you because she knows when you're having a stroke. He said, you be sitting at the table, you done ate something, you ain't got no business at the restaurant, and all of a sudden, you know, you start, and he said, you start doing all like this, he said, he said, and you having a stroke. He said, and the young girl told me, oh, quit making eyes at me, you making eyes at me. And he said, but, yo, he said, but that old wife, go in her purse, she got stuff in her purse, she got some medication in her purse, she know you having a stroke, she know how to give you the right thing to get you healed. I fell out when I heard that. I be sitting there. <laughs> Tell me, he was like, you are you having a stroke? He's having a Oh, quit making eyes at me. You trying to make eyes at me? He said, you go. With, he said, but you you need a woman to, to brown your age that that know that understands you with your old self. <laughs> let me get, Lord help me. I, I'm, let me, let me, let me, let me close. The pit, the prison, <laughs> and the palace. We done went through hell. We done went through so many things together. I love her more now than I ever have loved her. Because we walked through so much. And it means something. It builds something. It builds a strong bond. It builds a strong, you know, uh, of respect and love because you know this person is not going to leave you, not going to let you down, not going to. 
not going to run one away. When we, were, when we went through, when I lost my business and, and we were on welfare, she didn't say cut out. She tried to cut out. Now, she did try to cut out, but, but God wouldn't let you cut out. <laughs> so most of y'all know the story. She got up that Sunday, she's going to leave me. And the Lord said, I called you both. He said, you can leave. He, he'll, he'll, he, he won't be as effective, I think, something like that as he, what, did he, what was that, baby? He wouldn't be as effective. And she stayed, thank God. Thank God. Let me get back on point. He prophesied in the prison. Oh, Lord, okay. See, you have to be very careful that the enemy will not trick you where you are to have you begin to not function at full capacity because you're in the prison. Because you're not where you think you ought to be. I was just going to go on, but the Spirit of God say, say that. Because some won't function in a certain place because they say, I, that's, that's not where God wants me. Oh? Do you... You, be, you would be surprised where God wants you. You'd be surprised where God will send you. He sent Joseph to the pit, slavery, prison. You're going to say that ain't God because, because where you are right now is not where you think you ought to be? Be very careful, people. Be very careful, children of God. Because as, I, as, as the Spirit of God has said, if your prophetic word, if your prophecy, if your gift, if your anointing does not work in the prison, it don't work in the palace. The word of the Lord to you, Mr. Baker. The word of the Lord with you, to you, Mr. Butler. In other words, these were not, this wasn't a king, these were a butler a, a, uh, uh, a, and, and, a, and a baker they were domestics I, I'm so glad that I came up in small ministries because I've been in ministries where on a Sunday morning you might not have anybody but 10 people there all together and you and we learned how to have church, how to worship, how to sing, how to give our all. I didn't, I, you, you know, I don't need, I can come to church and ain't but one person here. I'm going to preach like it's uh, 20,000. Because I, I, I've learned my prophetic gift in the prison. And so when, I, so when you, you have to be very careful because if you're not making things better where you are, you will not make them better in the place where God is taking you. Joseph prophesied, Butler Baker. Butler, you'll be restored. Baker, he's going to take your head off. I think that's the, might be the opposite way. But he prophesies first to the, to, the, to the butler. You're going to be restored back to your place. You're the cup bearer. God's going to restore you back to your place. Oh, my God. That prophetic word. Then he prophesies to, then the butler said, well, you know, I mean, the, the butler said, well, hey, I, I think I, I mean, the baker said, I, I think I better get a word too. Oh, Lord, it's so much in this. Joseph is in prison trying to get his case to Pharaoh. This is Pharaoh's baker. This is Pharaoh's butler. He prophesies to the, the word of the Lord to the cupbearer, the butler. It was a good word. 
It was a word. He prophesied to the baker, Pharaoh going to cut your head off and put it on a pole. Don't ever let the place where you are cause you to manipulate your prophetic words and shape them to get you to where you want to go. Just tell the truth and let God do what he does. I have seen it where some have prophesied and they prophesied because the, the, the word that would give them access and, would, and, and they're prophesying because they're looking to be able to uh, get to a certain place so instead of them saying what God says they tell them what they want to hear I want to hear the truth just prophesy to me I want to hear what God is saying because, praise God, I want to be like David, praise God. If, if Nathan come and say, you the man, I want to be able to recognize I'm the man. Let me get it right. The, the, the cupbearer gets back. There's a famine, there's a dream that Pharaoh has. We know the story. Pharaoh has a dream. Now, now, if you, now let, let me tell you something. You can't prophesy to Pharaoh until you prophesy to the domestics. You can't prophesy to the high up until you can prophesy to the low down. Can you go out on the street and prophesy to the homeless sitting on the side of the road? No, you got to have a stage. You got to have a mic. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, see, someone, oh, see. No, I'm not, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm just telling you what the Spirit of God says. You, 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 you can't, you, can, you got to be an equal opportunity ministry of your gift. You can't look down on people because they are not in the status you are. So he prophesied to the domestic, the, the, and when, the, when, the, when Pharaoh had his dream, then, praise God, he has his dream, and he can't interpret it. But the cupbearer says, I know a man. You know why I met him? Pharaoh said, what, 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 where'd, you, where'd, you, where'd you meet him? You, you, you meet him in, in, in the palace? Where'd you meet him? Where'd you, where'd, you, where'd you meet him at? He's a prisoner. He's a jailbird. He's a criminal. He's been convicted of criminal sexual assault. And he's in prison. But while I was in prison, <laughs> there's some stuff that can happen in prison <laughs> that will help you to get to the palace. While I was in prison, I, 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 I was there. There was a man down, this man was down there prophesying to the prisoners. Now, they only show these two prophecies, and they, there's no record of him prophesying to anybody else. But if anybody knows prophets, they full of prophecy. And he said, he prophesied to me that I'd be back and that you would restore me, and here I am. Pharaoh said, go and get him. And when he brings them out, now the stage is set. Now everything is, is, is set up. God has moved him from, from Canaan to, to, the, to the pit, to Potiphar, to the prison, to the prophecy in the prison. And now God, so many times when you think you're getting further and further away from what God wants you to do, you're getting closer and closer. You say it's getting worse and worse, and sometimes it's getting better and better. You just don't know it's getting better. It was no way he could get to Pharaoh without getting in Pharaoh's prison. And sometimes the prison that you are in is right next door to the palace. It's one step away from the palace. You're one step away from walking through that door of access and praise God and being set on display.
He, he was in chains. He was, he was tried until his word came. The word was tried and he was tried. One scripture says, when I am tried, I'll come forth as pure gold. There is a refining process. To every destiny, there is a refining process. Gold is very valuable, but I've seen gold smelted and it becomes more valuable. The trying of your faith is much more precious than gold tried in the fire. When God tries you, when God develops you, don't, don't, don't fight against the process. Don't fight against it because of your ego. Allow God. God knows what folk are doing to you. He knows people have rejected you. He knows people have, have lied on you. He knows, praise God, that what folk have done. He knows what you've gone through. But in every place that you've been, God has been with you. Joseph prophesied and became the second ruler in Egypt. Come on, stand on your feet. I'm going to let you go. Stand on your feet. The pit, the prison, the palace. Very familiar word, but there, was, there were prophetic uh, releases in that word for us. God's, the, the, the seasons are changing. I, I, I sense that so much. The seasons are changing. There's a shift in the seasons. Many of, many of you that have been faithful and that have been committed, you're about to walk into your wealthy season. You're about to walk into your wealthy season. And, and it's because you have persevered. I don't know where you are in any of these processes that we talk about the pit. You may, you may be in the pit. But God has ordered your footsteps. You may be enslaved. Serving servant make every place that you are as you're going through your journey make it a better place make it a better place don't, don't be one that every time you come everything just you know oh lord here she come here he come we was having a good time till he showed up Tell she, you know it's some folk like that. They show up and you be like, oh my God. But then some folk, when they come, you just, oh yeah. Hey! Why? Because they, they, they bring the joy. They, they make things better. They, they cause things to, people to come together. The Lord told me, he said, tell them, what do you do? until your word comes. What do you do in the pit? What do you do in the prison? You make it better than what it was before you got there. Then God elevates you because promotion does not come from the east or the west. It comes from God. Put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Lord, we thank you. You're taking us through every situation and circumstance. We thank you, Lord God, that whether we're in the pit, whether we're in slavery, whether we're in the palace, I mean, excuse me, in the, in the prison, Lord, we know that you're with us. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, we got to be able to operate in these areas. Lord, deal with my rejection. 
Deal with my rejection. Deal with my estrangement. Sometime, Lord, we got to walk all by ourselves. To get to where you taking us, we can't take nobody with us. He couldn't take his brothers with him. He had to go it alone. But oh, your word is so true. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy is with you. <laughs> in the pit, goodness and mercy. In the prison, goodness and mercy. With you all, all, every, on your journey. The angels of the Lord encamped around you. Lord, we thank you for this word today. Let it minister to our hearts, uh, our minds. Lord, let it direct us. Lord, that we might reach our due season. You said, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you'll reap if you faint not. Our word is coming, Lord. It's coming. The Lord wants me to tell you, your word is coming. Your word is coming. <laughs> the devil tell you, it ain't never coming. It's coming. See, what I'm going to do while I'm waiting, make it better where you are. Put your hands together and give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to pray for you that maybe not, have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity if you're viewing us on social media platforms. If you, if you pray this prayer, Jesus will save you. As your head bowed, eye closed, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you were buried, and three days later, you rose from the dead, and you are alive. You are, my, you are the Savior of the world. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior, as my substitute. You took my place on the cross. You bore my sins, carried my sorrows. I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. Come into my heart. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your spirit. And Lord, I surrender to you right now in Jesus' name. Now, with your hands lifted, those that have prayed that prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against the works of the enemy. I bind every demon and devil that would try to cause them, Lord, that once they have made this great decision, the enemy comes in to steal the seed that has been planted. I bind you now, Satan, and I command you in the name of Jesus to loose them, let them go. They belong to God. From this day forward, you will not be able to break the relationship that they have with God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise.